Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Stepping Up. I'm your host, Daniel Dubois. This week, we explore the world of CMOS cultivation in St. Lucia. CMOS farmers have remained resilient despite battling adverse weather conditions and continue to supply the US and UK markets with exports on a near weekly basis, helping to boost economic activity along the island's coastlines. Export St. Lucia has been paramount in securing these new markets for farmers and since 2019, we have seen over 100 new farmers join the movement. Stowin <laughs> Samuel is the owner of Total Health Foods and Services Limited and is currently the interim chairman for the Seamoss Farmers Group in Opico. And he takes me on a tour of the Seamoss Farm in Savans Bay, teaching me everything I need to know about Seamoss cultivation. Let's take a look. Hey guys, so we are out at sea and I'm here with Mr. Cohen Samuel and he is the head of leading the charge on the CMOS Association for Farmers, bringing all farmers together. And if you can see the backdrop, I am surrounded by CMOS cultivation and it's like nothing that I've ever seen before. And we're out to actually see what it's like and then a little later we're actually going to be going in the water to see how it's cultivated. So let me introduce my guest, Mr. Cohen, Cohen Samuel. Thank you so much for joining us and let us know what we're seeing right now. Actually what you're seeing is um, uh, CMOS farmers and the plot of CMOS. All the sticks that we are seeing in the sea there, it is CMOS being planted on rope um, in this area. In this area we should have close to 60 to 70 uh, CMOS farmers planting in Savans Bay. Mm -hmm. So this is where most of the CMOS are being planted and um, across uh, Borai's beach as well. I realize you said that you have about 60 to 70 farmers sharing the, the space, um, but let us know a little bit more about the history of Savans Bay and this, this bay in, um, to be specific, and speak to the issues with um, the seabed and um, what CMOS farmers have to go through to be able to get space to cultivate. Actually in this area, um, a few years ago, we just had about probably 20 farmers but in 2020, uh, because of the demand of CMOS on the market overseas, the increase of farmers in this area is tremendous. Actually, this is why in all we have over 100 farmers planting CMOS between Savans Bay uh, to Broai Beach. But especially at Savans Bay, we, we have close to 60 to 70 farmers occupying here. There are some farmers that are not part of the group, but they still occupy this area. Uh, actually, where we are presently is a little shallow. Um, some of the areas are deeper than here. And um, as you can see, there are a few farmers in the sea, either harvesting seamoss or planting seamoss. Um, one of the biggest problem we have in the area is a lot of people who do not farm seamoss come and die for seamoss here. Actually, it's been broken from the rope sometimes because of the current and um, this is an issue for the farmers because as you can see the farmers are in the water and the sun is pretty hot they spend about six six hours in the water every day planted seamoss and sometimes because of the rough sea or the strong current some of the seamoss would break off the rope and it would be in the in the sea itself traveling and you have people that are not planting seamoss coming and collecting to sell uh, to exporters. And this is an issue for us. This is one of the issues here presently in this area uh, where you have divers coming here and dive for seamoss all among the seamoss farms when the farmers are not here. Uh, and we do not know, all we are seeing some of these farms are missing seamoss. And we know is either it's broken or they harvest the seamoss on the farmers. Yes, taking place here and Borai. Uh, where we saw the bleaching taking place, mm. every night the seamoss have been stolen there every night. Wow. Uh, we're trying to see what measures we can put in place to protect the farmers and the seamoss because we do not have a place yet to bleach our seamoss properly where it is fenced and where we have security guard. Um, so right now the farmers are trying their best to to increase the production of CMOS in, in the Viewfort area, especially in this area, and to make CMOS what it ought to be because we believe that St. Lucia uh, can be seen and um, we can export the best quality of CMOS out of this small Caribbean island. 
if you look around me it's so expansive like there's a bay and a little bit out to the ocean as well how many other sites in St. Lucia look like this uh, I do not know how many sites look like Savans Bay. I have not been to the west coast of the island, but I think uh, one of the areas that looks similar like this is Poale. Okay. Uh, Poale, there is what you call the Poale Seamoss Association. That's the other group in the, in the eastern side of, of, of here in Viewfort. Uh, for here, we have the Seamoss uh, Farmers Group here, hoping to be an association soon. Um, and this is where we are focusing and I think both of the areas, both Poale and this, uh, this area, we are experiencing the same problem with FEF. Um, it is one of the things that we have cried, we have gone and on news to talk about it uh, because actually I believe if CMOS farm is taking place in an area, it should be protected by law. And um, those people are taking the CMOS on one in the morning when people are sleeping. Uh, vehicles are, s are passing and they are seeing people with bags of CMOS. And we know it is not on the shore they are that they are actually taking the CMOS because when we come to the farm, some of the lines are empty. And we know that somebody took the CMOS. You also said that forming the association will help you guys come together to be able to lobby and to ensure that these type of these things um, are placed in law to be able to protect you and I'm sure the association themselves can come together to help and find ways to increase security around um, in terms of preventing um, things like pretty larceny. Actually we are working on this presently um, as the president of the group I did take uh, action with a retired police officer um, coming and patrol uh, the shore area, both uh, Borai on that side. But every time we hear for a few hours in the night, nobody seems to be coming at that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the guys may be hiding among the trees that we don't know, and they wait when we leave to do what they do. Stop stealing the people's seamoss, because, you know, it, just stop it. Um, let's talk about cultivation, right? Cultivation, um, before we go into it, what about, um, is, it, is there, because we're close to a mangrove, does that, um, is that the best place to plant seamoss? Is there anything about the topography or the geography of the place that um, basically provides like the best space to, to plant seamoss? So let's talk about the space and then we'll go into it. Actually, the mangrove in this area, it's a, it, it keeps the area healthy. Okay. Um, also, the population of the fish, um, the pot fish in this area is increasing tremendously together with the lobster. Uh, because anytime we come to the farm to harvest, among the seamoss always have a lot of lobsters, is small ones. So, but this area, as you can see, it's a shallow area. There is a lot of area here you can walk from way down up to this area. We can actually walk in the sea. So it's a good place to plant the seamoss in that particular area. The deep areas like deep sea planting is on the other side. You have um, so the St. Lou metal works where the guys doing the windows actually do deep sea planting on the other side of the island. They are deep. Uh, but most of our farmers are not swimmers especially the ladies. So we look for the shallow area for, for most of them to plant. Uh, but we have seen with Savans Bay area, Seamoss grows faster here. Okay. Uh, whereas Borai, it takes six weeks. It takes about three weeks here. Okay. So the, the, the farmers have to cut sticks. Some farmers go and cut sticks and carry it. Some buy the sticks at $5 per stick. The sticks are normally cut about six to eight feet tall. Um, we try to make sure it goes in the seabed at least four feet so it can stay there. The sticks will last about four years in the water. So and then they prepare their rope with their twine. All this, as you can see, these farmers are actually planting sea moss. Okay. So it would be a good place to start yeah. uh, when we're about to show you how they do the planting of the sea moss. And these farmers over there by the boat is actually cultivating sea moss. So we might, yeah, okay. so we will have to go on that side to see how they do it. But for this side here, uh, this is farmers actually planting from the main rope with the twine. Hey guys, y'all can give us a wave. <laughs> yeah. um, if you continue, so let us know what you're seeing. So what you see in there, to prepare the sticks and the rope will take about four weeks. 
four to five weeks, uh, but actually when it starts growing, in three weeks' time you can start harvesting the simos. Wow. Uh, this is how fast it is in this area. It is not so fast as borai. Borai will take about six weeks before we can harvest. But it is rough by borai because of the strong current down there. So sometimes you plant and then you have to continue replanting that same rope because they keep breaking off and they go in. We have to try to make sure that we give space for the fishermen uh, with the boats access where they pass in because they use the bay here before us. Right. Uh, so we are meeting with them to see how best we can solve the situation and make sure there are proper access right. in the so area. Is your farm now? No, my farm is by the boat. Okay, right. That's where they're doing harvesting. Okay. Here is where we plant. So since they are planting here, we can actually go and I will actually show you, explain the okay. process of the planting. All right, so and then for harvest, we'll go down this way. Okay. He, he. <laughs> <laughs> that one is so hard. <laughs> So I jumped into the water and it's extremely shallow. There's a lot of seagrass underneath my feet right now. A little uncomfortable about it, but we're here to learn and understand. And I'm here with Mr. Cuthbert. And he told me that he only just started um, cultivating sea moss almost only six months. So let us know about how has that been so far? Well, it's been going good for me so far because um, in spite of the shortness of time, I've been able to do a little harvest. Mm -hmm. And your market is a local market or is it? are you exporting as? yet or what is like? I'm not an exporter. Mm -hmm. I, I sell to Mr. Samuel who mm -hmm. does the exporting. On your behalf? Yeah. All right. So today you're cultivating sea moss yes. and I want to learn. So I see you have twine and you have, what is this here? This is, this is the plant. Okay. The seedling. The seedling. Okay. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. <laughs> this is the seedling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you must know where to break it and how to tie it on the twine. Because, um, you see, like um, this one here, this here. So you have to tie it somewhere in between so that um, the waves will not right. rip it off the twine. As it, as it, and is it more than one or is it, oh, you're just tying it to the rope here? Yeah, to that twine here, yes. And how many of these do you plant across the line? Oh, well, it takes about 50 of them. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you're done, um, how long, how big is your plot here? And when you, when you, when you, when you harvesting, how much do you plan to harvest? Oh well, last time I harvested eleven bags, mm -hmm. and um, just recently um, I had only two ropes. Mm -hmm. I harvested four bags from the two ropes. So you're slowly getting bigger. Yeah, which is which is very good for me. Yeah. Yeah. I want to learn. I don't mind tying a ceiling onto the rope here, okay. and I'm going to hand over my mic to our production assistant, and we're going to see how we cultivate sea moss. This we call the seedling. Uh -huh. Now this is the professor right here. He taught me how to do it. <laughs> Actually, he was the one who encouraged me mm -hmm. into sea moss farming. Mm -hmm. Yes. So now I greatly enjoy it. So you're testing his skills right now. Yes. Yeah, right. he's Actually testing. Watching what he's doing. All right. So, all right, if I tie it right here, it, it, it may hold depending on the wave, but I think here is a better place to tie it because you can see uh, a growth there and one over here and you tie it and um, you do a slip knot, am I right? Yeah. A now, slip knot? Yeah, you have to watch it, okay, pass it at the back there. You watching me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Go across like this. Then into this here. Uh, now you call it a slip knot. Okay. Okay. So that if you're harvesting, you may not rip it off completely. You mm -hmm. may clip. But if in the event that it goes with the waves, then you just, the slip knot, you will just pull that end and the twine is good. We'll see. Yeah. Okay. Um, good for planting. Okay. So you don't have a knot to untie. Yeah. All right. And you where do you try? get the seedlings from? We call that a nehali. A nehali. A nehali. A nehidi. Yes, What's that's right. A nehidi. <laughs> he probably he, he probably <laughs> ties cows and stuff like this, so he would know the nehali. Uh, no, I'm so going. So I'm asking you where you get the seedlings from. Oh well, I, I got I got this from my roots. You have the green tea. 
Oh. I got these seedlings from my roots. Mm. Yeah. From your roots? Yeah, from, from the, my roots. From the, roots. From oh, the from main the root. root. From yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So every time you harvest, you get new seedlings? Yes. Or yes. you have an opportunity to... You will get it from your root because actually, well, actually what is happening, this is what <laughs> they get right. floating. It probably break. Right. So this would give you about six plants. Right. Because you don't need to plant it so big. Like he was showing you, you can plant you it. Can the mic when you speak yeah, to you. Yeah. yeah, so this little piece here will actually give you about six plants. Okay, so hold on to a plant so you, you can do the practice. <laughs> the practical. So, so I need to put down. Yeah. That one big, eh? Yeah, too big, so you can actually cut it from here. Okay. So I'm doing a slit, slit knot. Yeah. Nehali. Now you should tie it a little closer to the main rope okay. so that it doesn't have too much leverage. Okay. The more it moves, the greater yeah. the chances of the waves are ripping it off. Is it like this and tie it around so? No. No? No. Okay. You might have to show me again. I need another right. demonstration. Okay. Go ahead, let me hold it. Hold on to this. All right. You go like this. You hold. Okay. You hold it. Yeah, you look at where I have the tip of my finger. Mm. You just hold it there. Pass it behind this one. Mm. Okay? Yeah. Go behind this one. Mm. Then in Make around that. and then right. come back. Right. Okay. So oh, so it's like hanging the... and then you tighten. Yeah. Okay, let me try. Can I do it from here? Yeah, you can tie it in between here. Okay. In between here, yeah. Right. Let's see if I can learn what the teacher taught me. So you go around, you pass it around, mm -hmm. then you turn and you come back in here. Yeah. Right. And then you pull. No, no. Okay. Uh -huh. yeah, just try to keep this one straight. Straight. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you can easily go behind it mm -hmm. on top here. Then. You see that? Yeah. And then into it right here. Oh, you have to go all around. Oh, yeah, not necessarily all around. You tie right here. Here? Yeah. yeah. All right, so I'm putting my finger here, right, you say? Let's do here. Okay. All right, so keep it straight. Put the, put the rope in, in, in the seedling before you. All right. You have it Yay. now. Yay! Okay. That's it. That's it. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Yeah. So you see, thank you so much. And yeah, this has to go about 50 times, right? Yeah, and you say it has about 50. That's okay. When I was learning, I took just probably even more time than you did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, but now I'm getting there. I'm not as good as some farmers are, not yet. but I'm trying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's interesting that um, you say that he's the one who made you um, start because we, we interviewed him before and he spoke about getting more farmers and more persons involved. Yeah. So how do you feel about being able to start CMOS just because somebody encouraged you? And what is it that you have to tell to other young persons as or people in general about CMOS palm cultivation? Okay, well... When he first um, encouraged me, I didn't take him on. I said, my, I probably wouldn't have the time. I would not be able to do that. But when I got started, I thought it was, uh, I thought I had started a bit too late. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah, but now I'm really enjoying it. And I'm in the water almost every day, um, planting seamoss. And I also encourage other, as many young persons who probably may not have a job right now, get into the CMOS farming it's very it, it's very productive and yeah. profitable profitable yeah <laughs> yeah he, he gives me good money for my CMOS <laughs> this is already good for harvest because of where the twine is here you want to harvest out of it to live Just to continue growing so in three weeks time you will have this thing getting huge again so you you have to cut it somewhere that it, the twine will not slip or the, the seamoss will not slip out of the twine. Right. 
So that would be a good place to cut it right, right there. there. Yeah. And how you cut it with your fingers? Yeah, with your fingers, you know. Right, that is it. So you do that part. You just rest it? Yeah. 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 Then you cut. You watch where your twine is. Right? The twine so is... Around here? Yeah, just... Right, so you cut down here. Right. You do the same thing below. Right, and below okay, so? Right. And you can cut this one here. This one here. Right down here? Yeah. So you leave that one to go. You do the same thing over here. You see what you leave? This you leave. So all where you That's cut That's how hair. we started. Yeah, all where you cut hair will grow. Nice. This is so easy. Right? And cut this one here. That's so easy. And that's it. That's good already. Ready the other one. The same way. I think you get it already. Yeah? So you ready for planting some Seamoss? <laughs> the miracle plant? I look forward to Daniel plant Seamoss. <laughs> Grow Seamoss St. Lucia. Grow Seamoss. This is the industry of the future. Yes. It is easy. It is quick to start. You have a lot of support. We already know that he's given us our all the information to join yes. the association. And it's a very sustainable plant and it's something I think anybody who is looking for something new to start into explore Simos. That's right. Explore Simos. Yes. Well there you have it guys and this is the first half of our show. We're gonna be going back um, and focusing on Mr. Cohen and he's gonna show us about what happens after the Simos is cultivated, harvested and what's the process like what the process would be like when you're going into processing for export and for sale. So We'll be right back. COVID-19 is a new pandemic disease as declared by the World Health Organization. It is transmitted directly by respiratory droplets when an infected person coughs or sneezes or indirectly through rubbing the face with contaminated hands. There is still no specific treatment or vaccine against COVID-19 and as such, the farming community should adhere to some special recommendations. Limit the number of crew members to only essential persons. Practice frequent hand washing and cleaning of all boat surfaces. Limit contact with the public, keeping a safe distance between each person. Limit unnecessary conversation with customers and pairs during the sale of fish. Wash hands frequently with soap and running water. Or use 60 to 95% alcohol-based hand sanitizer until water and soap are available. Sneeze and cough in a flexed elbow or into a tissue, immediately discarding the used tissue into a bin and wash hands with soap and water or use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer until soap and water is available. And avoid close contact with persons having respiratory symptoms. More than ever before, your important role as gatekeepers of St. Lucia's nutritional health and food security should be taken seriously. When you exercise these precautions, you not only safeguard your health, but also continue to allow all St. Lucians access to freshly caught fish and other seafood. Remember, it is our responsibility to ensure our nation eats fresh, St. Lucia's best. Welcome back. Planting sea moss is not an easy feat, and I am so grateful to Kerwin and the other farmer who we just happened to meet while we were filming for the show, I'm so grateful for the opportunity to see and experience firsthand what farmers have to do to get their product on the market. Kudos to all CMOS farmers and thank you so much for stepping up. In the next segment, we look at the process after the CMOS has been harvested and continue to learn about the CMOS trail from the ocean to the boxes for export. Cohen once again shows me how it's done. So once the sea moss is bleached, dried, this is how it's collected in, was that, crocus bags? Yeah, and they wash the bags properly. They wash the bags properly. So let us know what she's doing right now. Actually, what she's doing is to select and clean the sea moss at the same time. Normally, the farmers would do a little cleaning, but we don't depend only on that. Because of the quality, we want to export out of St. Lucia. We bring it here. And she's the one selecting. Now, as you can see, I'm holding the sea moss. This is from a farmer. You would see, it is clean from the farmer, mm -hmm. but actually you can see a piece of the seaweed stuck to it. Yeah. So she would actually take them out 
on the table this is those that's not good mm -hmm. for export oh. um, some of them may have that or they may have a little black a little black map mm -hmm. like this one right. this is black we don't export this for human consumption. Sapabo. No, sapabo <laughs> pour manger. Actually, people use it for salad. When you put it to soak, you will see black mark on it. Oh, so okay. it's not the best for exporting for people who use it for salad. Right. So she would do all the selecting. Mm -hmm. And after she's done with that, it's a lot of work for her. Mm -hmm. um, we box them. How long does this process take? Uh, most likely for the day, she would do like 100 to 100. 20 to 150 pound of this seam has been clean every day. Uh, my next question is for her. How does it feel going through this? Don't you get tired? And no, I, I doesn't. It feels good. Mm -hmm. It keeps me energized. I laugh with it. Sometimes <laughs> I cry because some of them does be so dirty, but mm -hmm. it's good. Does it, does it, um, like, does your hand get, your fingers get tired because it's kind of hard, eh? It's coarse when it's dry. Yes, my fingers get numb, but... I go through, I get through the pain. I'm used to it. And how long do you think that will, like, this hair, how long will you do this in one day or over a course of two or three days? One day. One day. She's a boss. <laughs> so let's go to the packaging of the boxes now. After the young lady is done with the cleaning and selecting of the CMOS, she would now package the CMOS. So we use a clear bag. Uh, we place that bag in the box, and then we place the clean CMOS in that box. What's the purpose of the plastic bag? Uh, drop it in the I think it is it is more professional putting it in a plastic bag in the box than dropping it in the box because um, depends where the box goes from here. Something may slip between the crack. Yeah, something might get wet. Yeah, okay. so it's it's better in the bag. So we seal the bag properly after with um, with a clear strap. We actually strap the bag properly, and then we seal the boxes. We wait. Um, she would actually wait here to make sure that it has at least 16 pounds. She is helping me. Yes. So actually, this one have more than 16 pounds. So the box, an empty box, is already 1.30 pounds. Wow. So uh, for us to get 60 pounds, we actually have to take the, the weight of the box out and then take a few branches out of this to make sure it is 16 so pounds. So it has to be exactly 16? 16, including the weight of the box. How okay. come? Is that just for transporting? Or um, when you sell in CMOS, we sell CMOS by pounds. Okay. So if you were to just put 16 pounds in this box without weighing the box itself, mm -hmm. the one who buys the CMOS from you will actually get 15 pounds and not 16. True, true, true. Because when they pull the bag out, you have a box That's that already weighs in 1.30. Okay. Yes. Right. So when we export it, we make sure that um, we tell them the box contains 16 pounds. So we have some of these boxes at 16 and these here at 20. Um, these boxes are sealed already. This will be labeled um, on Thursday morning, ready to export to the U.S. market. Since 2020, we have seen a big um, um, demand for CMOS, especially in St. Lucia. And I will continue to mention export St. Lucia because they were the ones who went and market that CMOS. And um, using Total Health Foods to, to, to send us first batch of CMOS to the UK, which that opened up the whole market in the UK. Um, the demand is so high for CMOS, especially in St. Lucia, because anybody that gets the grade A CMOS that we export will testify that they have not seen a CMOS like this. Nice. Yes. Um, so in terms of transport, you go through Viewport's dock or do you go through Castries? Actually, we, use, we, we do not use uh, sea freight. We use air freight for the CMOS out of Viewport Airport. Um, for the U.S. market, um, my company uses American Airline. Actually, we have an account with them. So I just call and do the booking uh, for the CMOS and take the CMOS to, to Hacks, the cargo shed in Viewport, uh, where they would uh, just prepare it for export. 
Well, Kevin, thank you so much for chatting with us. I really do hope that we finally jumped on board the train for CMOS. And it seems like it was something on the ground that has been developing. So we're really excited about zoning into you guys. And let's let us know how we can contact you, anybody who wants to join the association who, who may be interested in wanting to plant CMOS. So just give us your contact information and the process. Yes, uh, for, for planting CMOS, um, they have to contact fisheries, the fisheries okay. department, um, Thomas Nelson mm -hmm. at fisheries. They are the one in charge of the CMOS mm -hmm. um, stuff in St. Lucia. And if they want to contact me, um, the president of the group in, the, in Opico, they can do so by 519-4254. This episode was jam-packed with information. And I hope we as a country can gain an appreciation for the hard work that goes into the cultivation and exportation of CMOS. As you heard, contact the Fisheries Department for more information on how you can get started with your own CMOS business. Thank you guys so much for tuning in once again. And don't forget to email me at steppingup758 at gmail.com if you want to be featured on the show. I'm your host, Daniel Dubois. Until next time, don't forget to keep stepping up.